Hi, my name is Greg Turner. I'm an instructor at University of Texas at Arlington in the Electrical Engineering Department. I'm making this video today to introduce incoming engineering students to some of the computer resources that are available to you and that will be essential to your time uh, at UTA. There is a baseline expectation that any student coming in is able to use a computer. You're able to log into a computer, operate a web browser, you understand some of the basics of email, you maybe understand how to download and install software on your computer. And there's not a hard requirement that you own your own computer. However, it's going to be a big advantage for you to own your own laptop, to be able to carry around and the computer resources that, the, that you can use at UTA sometimes are limited. Uh, sometimes they're, they're a little bit underpowered or maybe during exams they're uh, in use and it's hard to get one at the library or in one of the engineering buildings. So um, it is a good recommendation for you to have your own computer. So let's talk a little bit about um, the basics of getting your computer set up. I have a web browser open right here. You're seeing that uh, I am using Chrome. The university does recommend that you use Chrome or Firefox on a Windows machine. The Edge, the Microsoft Edge browser is not recommended. There are some resources that don't work well with the Edge browser. That has, uh, that has been true in the past. It might not be, uh, it might be better now. On a Mac, Computer, of course, you'll be using the Safari web browser and that should work just fine for you. Um, probably best on a Windows machine using Chrome or Firefox. And as you can see right here, I am at the URL I've typed in uta.edu and that is the URL for the main UTA homepage. When you're right here, <clears throat> You, uh, this is, of course, the, the page where you can start and get to all of your resources. Probably the main one to look at when you go here to uh, click on students, it will give you some options on current students. MyMav is a place where you will be able to click, and again, you've probably already done this if you're enrolled and you're in class, of course, right now. Uh, you've been given something called a net ID and right here is where you have activated your net ID Presumably you've already done that your net ID is part of your Login credentials for all of your computer resources and I wrote this down on a little text uh, Notepad right here. And so I want to talk about that your net ID is part of your email your email is your net ID at mavs.uta.edu and then to complete your credentials to, to be able to log into something you would uh, enter your email as your login and then you have your password that you have set up now your password is something that you chose nobody else knows it you shouldn't be giving that out to anyone else ever even OIT if they ask for it you should never give out your password to anybody so your email for uh, for for email purposes is your net ID at mavs.uta.edu. There might be occasion in logging in somewhere where you just need your net ID for your login, but it's never wrong to use the, the complete email as your login. Here's an example of an email address. This is mine. And you'll probably notice that my, after the at, I don't have the mavs uh, along with the uta.edu. And that is common with the people who are employees of the university, um, uh, the, your instructors and all the administration. Uh, anybody that works at UTA does not have the MAVS, does not have the MAVS. But the part in front of the at is still my net ID. So if I was going to log in somewhere and it just needed my net ID, I would use the GK Turner. So again, the net ID is Usually, sometimes it's, it's some form of your name, it might include some numbers if your name is, is a common name and it's not unique, or it might be in the form of some code. You might have a code defining your net ID, it might be three letters followed by four numbers. Usually the letters are some form of your initials and the numbers have some meaning um, uh, to you personally. Regardless, the net ID is the part before the at in your email address. So net ID at mavs.uta.edu. 
And then when you're going on to MyMav and you click on students, you'll log in right there with that with those credentials. I'm not going to do that right here. It wouldn't make sense for me to try to log in as a student using my credentials. It wouldn't look right. However, the MyMav login is where you will see your classes that you're enrolled in. It is where you will go every semester to enroll in next semester's classes. It will be where you will pay your bills, you will pay, pay your tuition, any fees or anything that you need to do there. Um, there is a link right here to your student email. That opens up Microsoft Outlook within the web browser, and that's one way to get to your email. And then there all is also a link here that says Office of Information Technology Help Desk. And if you needed any help with your computer resources, you could click on that link right there. I'm going to go back here. Let's look at um, the next thing that you're going to want to be very familiar with. Again, starting from this top level page, if I click on students, there was my map. The next one is Canvas. Canvas is where you are going to go for information about all of your specific classes. Now, the view of Canvas that you're seeing right now is going to be different uh, for you because obviously you're in different classes. The ones that, that are showing up here for me are my spring 23 classes. And so, uh, but you'll, it'll look something like this. When you go to the dashboard, you'll see all those boxes and they represent a class. And if I click on one, here's 1106. If I click on that, that's generally what it's going to look like. There might be some information uh, on, a, on a home page right here. You're going to see announcements, uh, a syllabus, modules, assignments, grades. You're going to be, a lot of that will be on the left hand side. It's not going to look exactly like this. This is my view and it uh, would be different um, as a student. The other thing is that I have set this up so that uh, it looks the way I want it to look your instructor may have a completely different uh, set of cosmetics to their home page when you go onto Canvas, okay? So take that with a grain of salt. Um, but make no mistake, Canvas is the place that you wanna go to for information about your individual classes, especially the assignments that you're going to, uh, you know, your, your readings, your assignments, your homeworks, all of your interactions, your, a lot of times turning in homework will be, um, done online right there on Canvas, okay? Um, also, here's another link to, the, to your email. This goes right to the web-based version of Outlook, and it's very handy to, uh, to be able to, to read and send email right there. Another link right here to the OIT um, help uh, page is right here. That's a good way to get there. If you need some help with computing resources, you can go right there. Um, I'm going to go back to the top page and go, oops, I'm going to go to, um, let's see, I'm going to go right here to academics and click on engineering. And I want to get to a link that has some suggestions about computers, say if you're in the market for a new computer. So right here it says engineering students, and this is specific to engineering students. It says computer, uh, student computer recommendation. Here's a good link and some information about the kind of computer that you need for the engineering curriculum. If you are in the market for a new laptop, it's a, this is a great time right at the beginning of the curriculum and the suggestions here for the type of computer are very solid. Um, my personal opinion for an incoming engineering student is that you get a, uh, an Intel Core i7 uh, processor computer as much uh, RAM as you can get. The uh, rest of the recommendations here are pretty solid. If you have a Mac, that is great. Macs work great. The only caveat to having a Mac is occasionally, it's very uh, rare, but sometimes there will be a piece of software that you need that there is not a Mac version of. If that is the case, there are ways around that. There are uh, uh, emulators that you can get or virtual machines that you can install Windows um, to. And so they there are ways around those things. But if you're in the market for a new computer, here are the some good recommendations for that. Let me go all the way back. And I want to go back to, uh, I'm going to go here to Student Life. And I'm going to show you a third way to get to the 
Office of Information Technology, that's the computer resources, the IT people that will help you. And right here under Student Services, it says right there, um, if you scroll down a little bit, there is Office of Information Technology. And if you were at that top page and you just hit the search and searched on OIT, you would get here. In fact, the URL is literally oit.uta.edu. And if you scroll down here, what you're going to find is under the services we provide for students, there is a link there that says applications and software. The best thing that you can do for yourself before the first day of class is set up the Microsoft 365 software. So I'm going to click this link right here. And then this is going to go right here. It says an article, how to install Microsoft 365 applications. I'm going to click that link right there. And I'm going to show you one little problem with uh, proceeding from here, which is that I am now at home on my, uh, just at my personal house. I am not on campus right now. And um, even though I'm, I'm logged in with my credentials to the um, to the OIT website right here. If you if I click on this link right here, it's probably going to throw an error. Well, it didn't throw an error that time. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, if you are on campus and you're on the UTA Wi-Fi, you're within the UTA network, this will work well for you. Um, if you are having a problem, say that this screen didn't come up and there was an error message there, notice that the URL that I'm at now is no longer a UTA URL. It sent me to office.com. It sent me to portal.office.com slash account. And in fact, because I was, the reason that this did work is because I'm already logged in. Um, so let me try this. I'm going to actually uh, sign out of there. Let's see if I can uh, uh, try this a different way. Um, if you are having problems, you can go right to office.com. Office.com. Just log right into that and sign in. You will sign in with your UTA credentials. Um, your mavs.uta.edu credentials. You, for, when you do it the first time, you might have to get authenticated. They might have to send you an email that you reply to or set up. I'm not sure the current way that they authenticate you. Once you do complete that, you'll get to this page right here. Now, at the top level of this, this shows you all of the applications that is that are provided to you through Microsoft that you get to use as a UTA student. Along the left side here, you'll see that there's Outlook, that's for your email, Teams, that's your collaboration and your the way that you chat with uh, different students. You can chat, chat with other students, you can chat with your professors, you can set up meetings uh, in Teams, and then there's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all of the other Microsoft Office things. Again, this, this video is not a lesson on how to use Word or Excel, there is some expectation that you understand what a spreadsheet is and what a word processor is. There's going to be some basic uh, expectation in, in a lot of your classes there. If you are completely unfamiliar with any of that stuff, contact us. We'll get you uh, set up with some, some tutoring help that can get you um, up to speed on where you need to be. Okay. The reason I brought you here is this link right here, there is a drop down menu that says install apps and you can install the apps directly on your computer. Now that's not to say that you have to. Notice that with these links along the left side, if I just go to Word or Excel or Teams or Outlook, those apps will render within the web browser and I can use the apps. And honestly, that's a pretty good way of using the app. As long as you're connected to the internet, you have a good internet connection, and maybe you don't have a lot of hard drive space to install the applications, this is a good way to use it. However, if you need to work offline when you don't have a good internet connection and you have enough hard drive space on your computer, I do recommend that you go through the installation of all of those apps. There's a, just click that, go through the steps, take all the defaults, and you'll get everything installed. As it says here, it says uh, includes Outlook, OneDrive, that's your cloud-based uh, file system, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and more. The thing that's not included uh, right there is something called Teams. So I'm going to show you how to install the 
the desktop version of Teams as well. I'm actually gonna click on Teams right here. And of course, Teams will render within the web browser. Ah, there is an authenticator app that you're going to have to approve sign-ins for yourself. Um, I can explain more of that maybe first day of class if you're in one of my classes. Um, here we go, I just did that with my phone. There is an authenticator app that you will need on your phone to uh, do what I just did. I'm gonna tell it to use the web-based version of Teams here. And what you're gonna see here in um, the web-based version of Teams, along the left, all of you, the teams that you are a member of, and you'll be able to chat and look at calendars and, and do a lot of things. Teams is a collaborative tool uh, you may or may not use it in your classes. You will definitely use it if you're working on a project with another uh, group of students. And so that will be, it will be very important for you to understand how to use Teams. Uh, I am not trying to teach you Teams right now. What I am trying to show you is that to install the desktop version of Teams, if you want to be able to use it offline and you have enough room on your hard drive, you can go right up here to the top right corner, there's a little three dot menu right there, drop that down and it says download the desktop app. It also says download the mobile app. And I would dare say that um, for everything that you're doing, for, for all of these apps that you download on your computer, you should also go to your, um, if you have an iPhone, go to the App Store there. If you're on an Android, same thing, go to the App Store there and download all of these apps onto your smartphone. It is going to be very, very helpful uh, uh, to, to have those available to, um, to, to use those apps on your phone. Maybe you're, you don't have your laptop out. Um, it's it's going to be essential to set those up. So that is uh, um, kind of where I'm going to leave that off as far as um, installing the Microsoft products. Let me go back. I'm going to go all the way back up to top of the home page of the UTA page, see if there's anything else that I'm missing here. I think that's kind of where I wanted to leave this off. There is a previous version of a similar video on YouTube that I did a few years ago, and that one still works. It still talks about the, these, these same things. If you watch that video, good. You probably got a lot of information on that one. This one, I'm just doing it again, doing it over to um, talk about maybe newer versions of software and give you a little more information in there. Okay, this is going to be published on, UT, uh, on, on YouTube. And I personally will be sending this out to my incoming uh, first year students. And uh, other than that, um, you know, I, I will recommend that you set up Outlook. I'm gonna let you figure that out on your own, how to set up Outlook, get your email uh, going so that you can start receiving emails um, because I'll go back to Canvas here. When your instructor sends an announcement, and I'll click on announcements here, here is some of the spring 23 announcements. There's a long list of announcements that went out to students during the uh, spring semester. Um, all of those went out through Canvas, but they went they went to your email. They went to the email of the students, and that's where they saw those announcements. Now they could also come to Canvas and go to announcements to see those. But the difference, of course, is if you want to get the announcements right away you have set up your email such that the email alerts you and gives you a notification when a new uh, email comes in, so you'll get the announcements right away. And I do suggest that you set that up. Yes, set it up on your cell phone, uh, set up Outlook on your cell phone to receive notifications for incoming emails, and that you will get these announcements right away from your instructor. Okay. Um, as I said, uh, you certainly can email me anytime with any questions. I am a uh, faculty in the electrical engineering department. If you are a double E student, I look forward to seeing you next week when the student, uh, students are in class for the first time and we start the semester. All right. Take care.